This is part two of human learning, creating individual realities. Now, our brain does not replicate reality. As we said before, it doesn't simply take in and burp up information. We look for patterns and our brain fills in the rest. It's not a video recording. It's not efficient if we do it that way. It's more efficient just to take in the patterns burp it up and fill in the blanks. That way, that, in that sense, we create our own reality. We use what's in our head to perceive what's out there and fill in the blanks, construct a picture of reality. And as well, when we burp things up, we burp up the patterns and we fill in the blanks. Our brain uses a minimum amount of info and fills in the blanks. It's more efficient that way. Another thing about learning is it changes the physical structure of the brain. As we act upon the world, the world acts upon us. We connect stimuli with other stimuli and learning involves creating neural pathways and neural networks and strengthening neural pathways, making connections between the neural networks. So, and as well, the new structure of the brain creates or changes the way we perceive reality. So reality changes the structure of the brain and the structure of the brain changes the way we perceive reality. So there is no objective view of reality. All is perceived in terms of what we know, what we've experienced, and what we believe. In the same vein, what we know, experience, and believe alters the structure of the brain back and forth skim this quick list. This is an experiment looking at these words. There you go. Thought experiment, thought experiment, thought experiment. All right. Now, which of these words were on the previous list? You can write yes or no. Yes, 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 no. Most people thought the word sweet was on the list. Why? top-down processing. These all relate to sweet things, so we used what's in our head to fill in the blank, and we thought, oh yes, that must be there. Top-down processing we project onto the list. Sensing, sense-making, and perception. Sensation is the body's physiological response to physical from a stimuli from the physical world. Hits one of our sense receptors, like light hitting our eyeballs, the light waves, that is sensation. Perception is the meaning or interpretation we oppose, impose on the stimula stimulation. The sensation is the light hitting your eyeballs. Perception, we recognize the shape as a tiger. The light rays hit our eyes, sends data to the brains, paints a picture of reality, and that is perception. Perceived stimuli creates a picture on the canvas of our mind. It doesn't replicate, it creates patterns and we fill in the blank. Sensation, light hitting eyeballs, tend to stimuli, perception, we recognize that as a tiger. We never experience reality directly, only the pictures that are painted on our mind. We perceive patterns, as I've said, and this is planned redundancy, by the way, and we fill in the blanks. We use our knowledge to fill in the blanks. This is a more efficient way of processing. If we had to wait to perceive the complete tiger in order to make decisions, we'd probably be eaten. So it's more efficient to see patterns fill in the blanks and react. So perception is a two-way process, energy hitting uh, the light wave, hitting the eyeballs, that energy bottom up, but it's also top down, bringing knowledge to the situation. The data is in our head. The data combines with what's in our head to create a picture of reality. There's more top down than bottom up. Using our picture in the head, think about horse, rider, we create that picture of reality, although it makes no sense, just white and black shapes, but we can impose meaning on it. Now, what do you see here? Little experiment. Group one was shown a series of animal pictures. Group two was showing a series of people pictures. The animal pictures saw a rat. Those who saw the people pictures saw the person, eyes, nose, etc. We impose uh, uh, an interpretation of reality based what is in our head. There can never be a totally objective 
view of reality. So we attend to the perception, the sexual patterns, and we fill in the blanks. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. It's more than the data that we receive. We cannot possibly perceive and interpret all the information that bombards our sentences. It would just be too much. It would be overwhelming. It would not be efficient. Thus, we attend to some, ignore the other. We take in only patterns and we fill in the blanks. Part three, we'll be looking at perceptual organization.